Hello, welcome back. I wanted to thank you for sticking it out with me here while I was really busy with work the last few weeks, so I haven't had a chance to do this video. Um, I got my hair cut, and uh, now we're ready to roll on with the NBA Elite 11 video. It takes something really abysmally awful to derail a well-established franchise for years. Literally, years. There are games that come out like Call of Duty and Assassin's Creed, which regardless of how they're reviewed and accepted by the public, continue to come out every year. So when a game comes along and it derails a long-standing franchise, you know it has to be really abysmally awful. NBA Live had established itself as pretty much the reigning king of basketball games by the late 90s. If you were playing a basketball game around that time, it was probably NBA Live. However, what happened in 1999 was Visual Concepts decided to develop the 2K games for the Sega Dreamcast. The only issue was the relationship with the ailing Dreamcast only lasted a few years, and then these games found their way onto other platforms. 2K knew that EA kind of had a stranglehold on the entire sports genre at the time. So what they did to try to cut into that market was undercutting the cost of EA games by a really dramatic margin, sometimes selling the games for only $19.99. In response to really undercutting all their prices, EA secured the exclusive rights to the NFL franchise in 2004, effectively ending all of the 2K football sports games. However, what was quietly happening in the background was that the 2K NBA games had started to gather a really loyal following with the advent of the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3. History was not on NBA Live's side, unfortunately. The NBA games were suffering from the same problems the EA games are having across the board. Clunky animations, recycled graphics and physics, and overall just staleness in general within the series themselves. They did make a resurgence in 2009 with NBA Live 2010. It was the first game in quite a while to actually garner positive response from players and reviewers. It seemed like with this game, NBA Live was set to put itself back on track to become a real competitor again in that basketball sports sim genre against 2K. However, in a surprising move in June of 2010, EA announced at E3 that NBA Live would now be rebranded as NBA Elite 11 for release that fall. NBA Elite touted that it contained a new hands-on control system and real-time physics, things that EA claimed people had been asking for from their basketball games for quite a while. However, kind of behind all this smoke and mirrors surrounding NBA Elite 11, people knew that the real underlining tone of this change was to more directly compete with the NBA 2K games and distance themselves from the NBA Live title. So the real question is, where did it all go wrong? People blame a lot of factors. The first and foremost was the disastrous demo released in September of 2010, just mere months after the game had been announced and just basically a month before its release. It was by YouTuber The Real Hard Eight Times that the now infamous Jesus Bynum clip was recorded, showing the player Andrew Bynum in his bind pose stuck in center court throughout the majority of that demo. Because of this footage, people started to have really widespread doubts about the quality of the overall game. Just days before release, EA announced that the game had been delayed due to concerns about gameplay polish. However, it was also coincidental that the game was slated to be released the same day as NBA 2K, which at this time had been gathering scores of 9 and 9.5. And However, it was announced at the same time that rosters and dynamic DNA for NBA Live 2010 would be updated for 2011, basically sealing the fate of NBA Elite 11 at that point. On November 2nd, the CFO of EA, Eric Brown, formally announced on a conference call that NBA Elite had been canceled. I hope you enjoyed this. There'll be part two coming soon. We'll dive into now the game is canceled. Isn't that the end? But it's not the end. So that's what makes it interesting. So we'll see you for part two. Thanks for watching this part one and we'll see you soon.